Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Tom. And today we're talking about those overactive, stubborn, painful upper traps. Why are they so tight? What can you do about it? Now, before we break down some myths about the upper traps, because that's what we're going to do, <laughs> we're also going to tell you what you can do. Please, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Pass this link along to other people so they can subscribe and continue to learn about their bodies because we have so much more than just these podcasts that we do together, but we also do standalone videos, whether it's talking about certain exercises, mobility, things that can really help to open up your body and reduce that level of pain. And if you have more requests, drop them in the comments. Let us know. So overactive upper traps, another kind of repeat topic. Mm -hmm. So we did this one way back on episode 42. So it's been quite a while now. And really, if you want to get more into what the upper trap is, how it affects the shoulder blade, all the kind of physiology, anatomy behind things, we're going to talk about that more in that first episode. But now we really want to talk about like, why do our upper traps feel tight? Like mm -hmm. if you always feel like your upper traps are tight, why is that? And, and really, what should we be doing to address this, you know, rather than what everyone says we should do, which is just stretch them, stretch the crap out of them. Okay, you can stretch or you can do a foam roll or a tool or whatever it is that makes you feel better. But why is that trap tight in the first place? What's that right. root cause? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we like really talking into root causes because if all we're going to do is use these tools that give us temporary relief, we're never going to get to the reason that it's feeling that way in the first place. And I think one of the first areas that we can go to, and you could probably even assume, is our posture on a day-to-day -day basis. Our static, not moving, continuously coming back into this mm -hmm. bored head, rounded shoulders, looking at a screen posture. If we're continuously stuck in that pattern for hours on end <laughs> and not doing anything differently, well, what we end up seeing is that rather than having these up and tight upper traps, sometimes they're elongated and they're already long and stretched. But what we're doing is we're creating tension to hold that head up up to look at a screen. And so we're actually putting tension in a lengthened muscle. And so it doesn't always then make sense to then say, oh, let me just stretch that lengthened muscle. And also when we're in that forward head posture, I think we have to realize too, like our traps don't play a role alone in holding that head up. We also have like our little suboccipital muscles that are up into that neck area. We have our neck muscles. You know, we have other muscles that help contribute to that tension buildup that we mm -hmm. might feel in the back of the neck. So that that stretch that we might feel initially, again, might feel good in in the short term because it gets us to change that posture and do something different. But if we're continuously going back into this static forward posture, we're continuing to put pressure on these upper traps in an elongated position. So it doesn't make much sense to then stretch out. Jen and I say all the time, the next position is the best position. If you find yourself or if for work you are needing to be at a computer, on your phone, sitting for a lot of the day, how can we create a dynamic environment so that we're continually reminding ourselves to sit a little differently, adjust the way we sit, kind of reach our arms overhead, extend in our back and get back to work. What are going to be those cues that are going to help move throughout the day and have a more balanced, dynamic posture? Mm -hmm. Because no, if you sit with your head forward one time for five minutes, like that's not going to cause this. It's like no. the extended amount of time days in and days out that we are keeping our body in certain postures. Becoming aware of it and how we're talking about those responsibilities is really huge in stress management. So we're, we're dropping that tension not only again from our upper traps, but anywhere throughout our body. Yeah, and the stress and the breath play such an intertwined role together that if we're living in more of a stress place, we're likely breathing mm -hmm. in and out of our mouth more, especially if we have kind of that forward head posture. We're probably using more of the accessory muscles up around our chest and our neck to mm -hmm. breathe rather than breathing with our low, actually breathing with the diaphragm, breathing with expansion through the rib cage. And so that's another thing that we really want to bring ourselves back around to is how do we start to breathe with this more supportive low breath to just automatically through the way that we're breathing start to reduce the amount of stress and stress signals that our brain is putting out put ourselves in more of that parasympathetic system where we can think a little bit more clearly where we're not just in that stressful system always feel like feeling like we're reacting to the world around us mm -hmm. put ourselves in a little bit more control you know naturally allow us to just drop some of that tension away from the neck and the shoulders that we may be holding naturally in our stressed environment but the way that we breathe can really impact that. I mean, take a deep breath right now if you're listening. 
take a deep breath in and out through your nose. What do you notice? Do your shoulders rise? Do you put pressure into your chest? Or do your shoulders kind of stay in place and you can breathe from your low rib cage, not belly, but like low rib cage area and your shoulders mm -hmm. don't elevate. That's what we're really looking for. If you take a deep breath in your your natural tendency, like don't fight this here, don't, you know, try to play along. Just just do whatever your natural tendency is. If your natural tendency is to make that neck get really tense, especially doing this in front of a mirror is really good and those shoulders kind of rise, well then we know that you probably are more prone to be in that sympathetic kind of stress mm -hmm. system. So automatically you can see if my shoulders are rising when I'm taking a deep breath in, I'm utilizing some of my upper traps then. And that could be a reason why I'm staying in that state of tension and pain and feeling like they're always taking over, right? So just starting to bring awareness to that and then we'll work we'll talk through more of what you can do and i think overall too we focus too much on i need a stretch i need the stretches that are going to be good for my neck and we don't focus enough on the strength aspect so i think a lot of reasons why people might feel this tight overactive upper trap is that we're actually not strong through our scapular muscles overall and our upper body strength all together which includes our upper traps and so if we want to start to talk long-term relief then those are kind of like some of those issues that we might be leading to why we're having some tight upper trap so what can we start to do rather than going to stretching right away let's go to starting to open up the rib cage and that mm -hmm. upper back mobility is going to be huge usually we're in this like slumped rounded posture we're stressed throughout the day but if I can start to get this upper back to kind of move a little bit better if I can start to get this rib cage to expand a little bit better well then I normally and naturally will start to have that breath response into the sides of my rib cage and sit up a little bit more naturally without forcing it or turning muscles on just because I have more of that natural mobility to do so now. Yeah. And so what would you say are some good exercises to work on that? So I, I mean, some of them that we've done in the past so many times for breath work and all that kind of stuff we've shown, kind of taking like a band or a towel or a scarf or something and wrapping it around your low rib cage for mm -hmm. good feedback and then doing things like cat cow, doing things like where we're in like a low child's pose position and then you take one elbow and you rotate it up to the ceiling. And so mm. we're getting kind of that rotation in that upper back. but the breath awareness is still in that low rib cage area because if we can start to expand that rib cage and move and mobilize that upper back well then again we start to come into a naturally more upright position without forcing it and that's really what we want to do and i think a great way to work on rib cage mobility or getting our rib cage to expand and mobilize in different ranges is during a lot of those exercises even if it's an open book like when you're in the closed portion of the open book take a deep breath right and mm -hmm. try breathing into the back of the rib cage and then when you're in the open portion of the open book take a deep breath again and you're going to feel kind of different tugs and pulls at your on your rib cage depending on what position you're in especially like in that child's pose one when you're kind of fully down in the child's pose take a nice deep breath and then when you open up to get that thoracic rotation take a nice deep breath again and that's going to really help you start to find that expansion through that rib cage in different positions mm -hmm. and then okay scapular strength there's so many things that we can start to do mm -hmm. to work on scapular strength again i was i was mentioning earlier if you get prone and there's tons of things we can do where even just working on so prone meaning prone on, laying on your stomach yeah. and arms extended above your head even getting in that position can be tough for some people that just could be really tough mobility <laughs> wise but again if that feels comfortable to get into and then just trying to ever so slightly lift your hands off like if your thumbs are pointing towards the ceiling lift your hands off that's really going to be great at activating the lower trap which is something that a lot of people will ignore but leading and always when you're doing especially prone exercises feeling like you're leading with the shoulder blade with the movement so you're not compensating just to get the hands off the ground but even if you feel like you're going to slightly pinch those shoulder blades in towards each other and use some shoulder blade depression so you're almost trying to like pinch them down and towards each other a little bit even if the hands aren't going to come off the ground like that's okay it's a great place to start yeah an easy place to start with that too is even by with your arms by your side without having to have the full shoulder range of motion just starting to gain that awareness of those mid traps of those low yeah. traps and then 
having the arms out to the side and then having the arms up. And then, you know, if we're talking about adding in serratus anterior work, so your serratus connects from underneath your shoulder blade and wraps around your rib cage. So that's going to be our punching muscle. So anything that we're doing that we're reaching forward, trying not to overutilize our chest, but really reaching that bottom edge of the shoulder blade. That's what mm -hmm. I like to talk about. That bottom edge of the shoulder blade is coming toward that armpit area. That's going to be that muscle that kind of turns on and is necessary for that upward rotation. One of my favorite ones is a wall plank. So you're standing like a foot away from the wall and you press those elbows into the wall and then you try to get your hips away from the wall. So you're not bending your knees toward the wall. Your knees kind of stay in line with your ankles. And this is really hard to get the elbows forward, but the hips back. You know, that's kind of a, a hard position for people. But if we yeah. just start to breathe in that position, one, we get that rib cage accessibility to kind of start to move and open. We get that serratus anterior to kind of push into the wall. And so we get this good shoulder blade movement. And the other thing that happens when we're arm is kind of lifted and we're pressing forward and getting that upward rotation, we are getting some upper trap work as well. And I think knowing that we don't need to fear working your upper trap. We don't need mm -hmm. to fear feeling the upper trap work either. It is mm -hmm. going to work if I'm doing anything where I'm starting to lift my arm overhead. It's going to kick on, but we have to make sure that you know, if you're feeling it overactive and it's dominating the movement, well, then maybe we need to strengthen a little bit more in the low traps like Dom was demonstrating or in the serratus anterior with like the wall plank. So after, you know, doing a little bit of work on just learning more about these shoulder blades and activating them, sit against the wall and try to get into that wall angel position with elbows and wrists as close to the wall as you can. And then try and just kind of lightly angel them up like you're making a snow angel as if you're going to touch your fingers above your head. But again, you don't need to go that far. Just go as far as you feel comfortable initially. And that's going to help you work on that upward rotation using the serratus anterior, upper trap, lower trap that we've already worked on getting activated and also doing it in more of like that upright position rather than slouch Rounded. forward. Yeah. So you're, uh, that really challenges your upper back mobility as well. We either have a program called the neck and upper back plan in Gen Health or the shoulder plan. Both of these plans will incorporate a lot of the exercises yeah. that we're talking about. And we start from the very basics, understanding our breath with movement, understanding mm -hmm activation what it's supposed to feel like and then we progress it as the month or as the weeks go on so i highly highly recommend getting into gen health and just starting that if you're mm -hmm. so unfamiliar like even if you see these exercises on youtube and you're still like i don't know why they're doing it i don't know what it's supposed to do i don't feel anything different i only yeah. feel my upper traps if that's the case come learn because we really cue it and talk you through it in a lot more detail in those plans and programs and if you haven't tried gen health yet there's so many different plans so i just want you to feel <laughs> more comfortable and guided within your body and it's easy to talk about these exercises it's another yeah. thing to really feel them but the final thing that we want to talk about if there's anything you're going to stretch yeah stretch in a way that's going to open you up, open you up from that position that you're likely sitting in more often than not throughout the day. So how do we open up the chest? How do we open up those lats? Because we tend to be in this forward, more shoulders rounded, more internally rotated at our shoulders position where we're kind of internally rotated at those arms. So how can we open up and get to some sort of wall stretch or mm -hmm. in a child's pose, kind of getting into that lateral child's pose where we're going to feel a stretch nice and good under our armpits. Thanks for joining us for another PT Pearl all about those upper traps. Hopefully you learned something something. Are you someone who tends to have upper trap, upper back, or neck pain? Comment below. What has worked for you? What other questions do you still have? Remember to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And of course, we'll see you next time.